you guys are here. We just want to really give you a warm welcome from our board and our employees, our staff that help with us. We've been pretty free when thinking of you uh, or me <laughs> for quite a few weeks now. So we're so glad that you're here. And we really look forward to getting to know you a little better. Um, I have a, a light you're doing, so I may not be able to stand up the whole time. Can you guys hear me okay in the back? All right. First time getting a mask after a lot of lectures. <laughs> Um, what I wanted to do during this time was just to give you a little bit of the vision and a little bit of the history, but more importantly, the vision between behind SMI and MCO. Um, so that hopefully you can take some of that with you. I'm not so not so important for you to remember the dates or the names, although some of that will be on there. But what I'd like for you to see is actually some of the choices people made along the years the hard choices, um, ways that they changed their careers totally to help um, provide ministry and do ministry. And hopefully, it sounds like a lot of you guys have been exposed to some of that, but maybe you can start thinking of that for your own career too. Uh, most of us are so geared to doing the next thing, the DAT, the MCAT, getting into med school, getting into the nurse practitioner school or the next nursing job. We're also geared for that, but there's actually a much bigger picture behind all of that that I wanted to talk to you about. So, um, this year is actually our 25th anniversary for Medical Campus Outreach. So that's kind of a really exciting thing. We're happy about that. Our vision is to serve those that are in healthcare um, in Philadelphia in Christ's name. And what we really want to try to do is to disciple people that are in healthcare. The reason I'm still involved after all these years is that people early on helped me to understand who, what my identity in Christ was. Um, helped me to understand that my identity is actually in who I am as a child of God and that God loves me and that he is working my life. I love, love what you shared, Jerry. It was so good. But he's still growing me and he's working in me. That's much more secure than my position as a neonatologist or as doing academic medicine, or my position in medicine, which will go up and down all the time. That is secure. That's what I want, one of the things I hope you guys will get out of this time at SMO. We really want to try to help train you to integrate your faith into your career. What does it mean to be a Christian first, and a nurse second, or a physician second, um, or OT second? Um, how does that work? How do you do that? But then also to give you a vision for Using healthcare as a service, as a ministry. If you guys haven't seen it, most people in medicine are pretty burnt out, um, even before COVID. Um, really, it's tough. How can you maintain a vision for service, for using medicine, for using healthcare as a place of service? How do you keep that? How do you not get burned out? So that's our goal, big goals. All right, we want to proclaim Christ and make disciples on Philadelphia's healthcare campuses. So why Philly? Well, a lot of you guys have ties here, and that you may know more of this. Um, Philly is a medical city, actually. So the biggest health care, the biggest employer in Philadelphia is healthcare industry. The, the biggest employer in Center City is Jefferson <laughs> Healthcare Institution. In the whole city, it's Penn. Most most of which, or the majority, is hub or the hospitals that are part of Penn. There actually are over 10,000 healthcare students here, 6,000 just medical students. Um, there's five medical schools, 12 nursing schools. I feel like this is like 12 days of Christmas. Um, six PA programs, seven PT programs, OT programs, three pharmacy schools, two dental schools, a doctor school. And then if you go just across the river to our friends in New Jersey or go a little further out, there's even more. There's two more medical schools there tons of lots more allied health training programs. Healthcare is Philadelphia's industry. And so our vision is to try to reach the city of Philly, the state, the nation, and even the world through the healthcare. So this is this is huge for us. So how does this all where did this start from? Well um, back in 1989 there were actually two students at the medical college in Georgia. In Augusta, Georgia. The guy on the left is Bill Pearson. The guy on the 
right is Clark Newton. These are current day pictures of them, actually. They didn't look like this in high school. Um, so here's where you start seeing some unusual things happen. Bill became a Christian right before he started medical school at Medical College of Georgia. He and Clark Newton started to, started to get together and just pray. They just prayed for their campus. They prayed for a revival there. And over the course of three years, there was a revival on their campus. Some years, 20% of a class became believers. I've never heard of that since. I've never seen that since. But do we pray for a revival on our medical campuses? Okay, here's the first U-turn. Bill dropped out of medical school at the end of the first year to disciple people. He actually never went back. He ended up doing a PhD at Harvard later, but he decided discipling people in healthcare is more important <laughs> than actually continuing medical school for him. That was God's call on his life. Clark State. So there isn't like a one path that's all. But I want you to see there's a vision. There's there's maybe seeking God of what do you want to have me do with my life? So what happened was in 1992, Bill came up to Philadelphia and he was actually visiting Esperanza, that logo over there on the right is Esperanza's logo now. And he was visiting here and um, it was actually an outbreak of a disease. Okay, this is a quiz for you guys. What's that disease there? A picture of it's a little fuzzy, a little green. Sorry. Um, the guy has a rash. What do you think that is? It was an outbreak of this disease in the early 90s because people were not getting their vaccinations, and actually people were dying, especially children. I was doing my residency then at St. Christopher, not far, not far from here, and I took care of a number of kids who died from this disease. Anybody know what it is? You guys probably have not seen it. Measles. Okay? Part of the MMR. Measles that measles. So kids, especially in North Philly, were not getting vaccines. Lots of reasons why. But Bill and S. Browns came up with the idea that, hey, why don't we bring some of these students from Georgia up to Philadelphia and see if we can meet this need somehow that was that was really very important. So the first SMI was started in 1992 called SMI Philadelphia. And it was from students coming in Georgia coming up here and giving vaccines. They actually went door to door in North Philadelphia, is what we usually do, checked on people's immunization status and gave vaccines to people. So between 1992 and 1998, they gave 17,000 vaccines. Okay, during this, what was the, essentially an epidemic here. That's one of the teams. Um, you can see the little data. Ah, this is 1996. A lot of these people are serving overseas now. And what happened, SMI is actually not just about service. That's a part of it. Um, and that's probably why you're only doing kind of service projects half a day. It's actually really about us investing in you. It's really about us trying to help train you, give you a vision. And that became very popular. And so between 92, in 2005, over 2,500 healthcare students were trained in various SMIs that grew up all over the country. Most of those went overseas to a lot of the countries that you see listed here. Um, but there were a few that stayed, including this one in Philadelphia. So there was one at one time in Northwest United States, um, in Chicago, in Nashville. But a lot of them went overseas and did, and did uh, medical mission work overseas. So we kept SMI Philly going up until 2001. And in 2001, there was another bit of a U-turn. Um, at that time, actually, we had friends um, through Georgia. One of them had left and gone and worked in uh, Southern Texas. And he approached a team here and said, hey, it's a big physician, this is the largest physician shortage area in the United States at this time. Can you come and help and so in 2001, we actually stopped SMI Philly. We went to Texas. So the team here in Philly was running SMI Texas. All the way down in Harlington, Texas, where the little star is, right on the border of Mexico and Texas. And little towns where the, the biggest thing to do is to go get a smoothie at nighttime. That's really smoothie in Walmart. <laughs> that's, what, that's what was going on. We partnered with a group called Valley Baptist Health System that actually had a Christian town practice 
residency program. And we would actually go overseas, go across the border, I should say, not overseas, into Mexico and do clinics there. So in like churches, you can see up there. I'll show you a few other pictures too. Or we went door to door and worked in the colonias. The colonias are areas of our houses. These are some of the colonias, the two, the two top pictures. Places where a lot of illegal immigrants would live, usually without any running water or any electricity, very, very poor, really little access, at least at that time, to health care. Um, and we would take, we would minister to them. So we did that for uh, 2001 to 2009. And in 2009, we actually didn't have an MCO director here anymore. It was getting harder and harder for us to run a program so far away. So we turned it over to Valley Baptist, who ran it for a few years. And then they had a hard time recruiting a lot of students because there's no medical schools close to there now. So uh, it, didn't, it didn't continue. But in 2010, we actually decided to start a summer filling here again. And I was privileged to be part of that. So since 2010, actually, we've had here in Philly 178 students come through. We've done over 14,000 house crates here in North Philly. Okay? We've knocked on over 21,000 doors. We've prayed with over 5,000 people. We've had, the, we've had the privilege to lead 77 people to Christ. We've developed a little bit of a, of a robust academic program. We've done a number of research projects. We've had presentations at national meetings. Still working on some papers to publish. That seems to never get done. Um, one, of the, one of the research projects that we did was actually that we, did a, we would do a review uh, each year. And then some years we did a more robust review we looked back and said, hey, of all the people that we screened that had really high blood pressures, high blood sugars, did they actually go to see their doctor and health care provider? And what we found was that 40% of those people who actually contacted their doctor or saw their doctor within three weeks, that's not easy, actually, to get an appointment and go um, within three weeks here in these systems, um, they did that because of what the SMI students. So we were thankful that actually we've been able to get people into healthcare. Okay? Part of what is unique about SMI is that we really want to partner with organizations and ministries that are here long term. So Esperanza, the local churches, um, that's, they're the ones that will be here long term. And then we also started uh, SMI Albania in 2016. We developed a relationship with a Christian clinic there. And um, we would have some of their residents come every other year here, and then every other year we would go there. And some of our students from SMI would go and help to disciple their students. They would have a team of maybe 20 healthcare students that they would have there. We would help to train them and go out and do outreaches with them and learn how to share your faith in a Muslim context. So let's back up for a minute. How did this all happen? So that's the history of sort of SMI in a nutshell. Um, SMI is one thing, one thing that MCO does. So what happened? Remember that those pictures of those two guys, Bill and Clark, that I told you about? Here's, here's some more new terms. When those people that have became Christians during med school and other people that were involved in the ministry, so this was not just medical students, but it was a lot of medical students. They actually were OTs, they actually were nurses. When they graduated from their schools and they were looking for their job, or the medical students were looking for a residency, they not only tried to look for a good program, they tried to look for, hey, where is God calling us to start an MCO as a team? And actually, people chose cities based on starting an MCO there. So this is the only time in my career that I've heard of somebody choosing a residency based on a ministry choice. Or maybe you need to think about that a little bit. When you guys get to that stage. So from Augusta, teams went out and they started MCOs in all these different cities, none of them currently. So there's not a lot of them, we're very small, um, but we really try to um, have some distinctives that I'll talk to you about in just a minute. So from this one little ministry, there's two little guys, well, two, two guys that were praying for their medical school, lots of stuff happened. All right, so what happened was two of them, Reese Oliver, who is a neonatologist now, and Patrick William, 
who is a pediatrician. You can see we like the pediatrician here. Um, came to Philadelphia, and they started MCO Philadelphia here in 1995. So this is our 25th year anniversary. The distinctive of MCO compared to other ministries and is that they really want to try to do one-on-one -on -one discipleship with people. That's really what's powerful. It's not so much all the programs. It's really trying to do one-on-one -on -one discipleship with people. All the MCOs are under a local church because they want that spiritual accountability, that authority. And so they approached a church here called 10th Presbyterian. A lot of you guys might know about that. Who agreed to be a shepherd over MCO. They didn't financially fund it. We have our own board. We have to do all of our own fundraising, or a lot of it. Um, but they agreed to be an umbrella and to watch over us. We partnered with Esperanza to run SMI, as you see. And during that time, also, um, Patrick, who is a pediatrician now in Georgia, um, wrote what's called a healthcare Bible study. It's actually on our website. I'd really encourage you guys, after SMI, if you have time this summer, go through that. It's really in-depth. It talks about sin, disease, um, wellness, healing, shalom, building the city, like all from a very biblical perspective. That's a great foundation. We yeah. have used it in some yeah. of these kinds yeah. of yeah. Bible yeah. It is being edited right now. So the, you have the old version on the website. If you wait till like early August, we're almost done. Okay. Update. Yeah, some, like some of this reference, he wrote it in like 2000. So a lot of the references were late 90s, early 2000s. We've updated those. I think our oldest reference is like 2013, 20, 2014. And sadly, a lot of the healthcare has not changed <laughs> in yeah. 15 years, but oh well. So, either version. Yeah, uh, <laughs> is good. So, there are also a lot of other people whose names should be on here, and they are not because they're serving in closed countries. So, if I put their name on here, and if I spoke this being reported, they'll get in trouble. Actually, most of the early leaders from MCO are working overseas. So they've maintained that vision of using healthcare. There's one um, physician who did three different residencies. I thought he was crazy. He did, he did uh, internal medicine at Temple. He did family practice at Valley Baptist, and then did an OB fellowship. Went to serve in an un, um, went to serve in a closed country and now is not able to practice medicine at all. So they've, they've used medicine to get into countries, which is sort of the vision that we have. Um, we think that healthcare workers actually, can, the Christian healthcare workers can go anywhere in the world. And that is a huge opportunity for you guys, and one that we really want to try to promote. So, but they are willing to lay it down. I think after doing three residencies, I don't know how willing I'd be to lay it down. <laughs> after all that time, but they were. And so they used it to get into a country, but then they didn't hold on to it so tightly. Part of the vision also is that all the people that get trained in healthcare, get discipled, they are gonna see millions of patients also. So I have never had a Christian doctor, I've never worked in a Christian institution, but wouldn't it be amazing if your doctor prayed with you, or your OT, or your nurse? Or if they talk to you about, how are you doing spiritually? How are you coping with this high blood pressure? What's making you anxious that you have high blood pressure? That would be amazing. And so that's part of the vision that we have. All right. Um, so what are we doing now? So now, Laura's been our director, which we're very thankful for since 2016. So SMI is one of the things that we do, actually. We, we help to run, to support 13 different campus Bible studies. Here in Philly, we have monthly luncheons or city rides. Pre, this is pre-COVID. Um, <laughs> the campus Bible studies are all virtual now. Um, usually we have teaching time every month, whether on a campus or at a church. Um, we have a mentoring program. For you guys that are in the area, we'd love to, to uh, put you in touch with a mentor. Um, somebody that's a little further down the road. Um, we have a healthcare library. Uh, that has a lot of resources. Um, we also have a lot on our website, mcphilly.org. We have a women's house. We have minis two ministry houses, a women's house and a guy's house that people live at and are disciples that are all healthcare students on the majority of us. We do have an internship. We met James and Cody. They've, they've both been through it. 
part of it. But really, we want to try to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one discipleship uh, with you guys. Um, we do it medical evangelistic outreaches, part of SMI that we usually do, like just a day, four or five times a year. That's through COVID. <laughs> and then we run SMI Philly. Um, so, um, yeah. So, what we've seen um, in the last 25 years is that the majority of people have left here. So I'm one of the few people that's still here, probably because I've had some health issues, but most of the people are not here anymore. They're serving other places. So these are a list of uh, some of the places that our good friends are serving at. Um, Iran, Papua New Guinea, Egypt, Spain, China. A lot are actually working at um, inner, inner city clinics here at Esperanza. Actually, one of the better ways to get to know what it's like to work in the inner city is to do SMI. A lot of people are serving in local hospitals, and it's near and dear to my heart, also at some academic institutions like NIH and CDC. Um, it's kind of amazing to see there are scores of people actually serving overseas through MCO. So, anyway, so that's a little bit of the history and a little bit of the vision. I just want you to Start thinking about, is medicine something I am called to? Or, and I'm using medicine broadly, okay? I don't mean only medical students when I say that. Is something I'm called to, or is it something I'm driven to? That will make all the difference in your career. Is it a calling? Is this where God is calling me right now, for today, for this week, for this year? Maybe not for the future. Or is it something I'm driven to? Something I have to do, I have to prove myself, my family makes me want to do this. Start thinking through that a little bit, because it'll make all the difference in the career. So. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Love to talk to you a little bit more about that. So, thanks.